Welcome Hunters to today's video, where today I want to talk to you about some of the following new AT Colby weapons that have been introduced to us and ones that are worth grinding out for. At this point, you might have fought and defeated AT Colby to gain the new Rainbow Tier weapons, which not only offer new stats and upgraded version from their counterparts, but they also come with new built-in skills called Critical Element and Critical Status, just like the other Nustral weapons, so overall offering some new and interesting builds to be based on them, and also freeing up some more space. So I want to go over the few new Kajar weapons that are worth getting through the event and worthy of keeping if you like to experiment more with these new variations. First Kajar weapon we have is the Kajar Axe Paralysis Switch Axe. It has a attack of 700, affinity of 10%, 330 paralysis, blue sharpness, no slots, has a power file and critical status skill. First start on flexible for the CCing and Monster Oblivion, I would consider this a must have tier weapon if you haven't already tried out their Battle Grinder Switch Axe, as it can lock down any monster you want effectively. Although there is a standard Colby Tattoff Axe Paralysis Switch Axe, which offers a slight increase for both damage and status, this version offers more flexibility for mixing and crafting your ideal set, just like the main purpose of the Kajar weapons. Next, we have another paralysis weapon called the Kajar Glee Paralysis, which offers 620 attack, 10% affinity, 210 paralysis, innate white sharpness, Zero slots and critical status. Just like the Kajar Paralysis Axe, very flexible for shutting down monsters and do tons of follow up damage in the meantime. The great thing about this version though is that its natural wipe sharpness offers an extra boost for damage and room for players to expound on if they wish, while also being a glaive weapon which can allow you to dish out fast and hard hitting attacks once you max out your buffs, so all in all a very deadly weapon to use. Next we have another paralysis based weapon called the Gajar Buster Paralysis Gun Lance that has a 414 attack, 15% affinity, 360 paralysis, blue sharpness, 0 slots, level 4 normal shelling and critical status. Now this is something worth keeping an eye out for. A paralysis level 4 shelling gun lance is a very unique combo as they both play hand in hand with each other for CCing fun. It looks very similar to the Raytheon's gun lance for its stats, but this version actually has a status that is more useful compared to the poison variation. Definitely a worthwhile weapon to master if you land your hand on this beauty. Next we have a different weapon that's not a critical status variant called the Kajar Strong Ice, which has 684 attack, 20% affinity, 480 ice, blue sharpness, level 1 jaw slot and critical element. I've been hearing a lot about this weapon for speedrunners and the like, about how powerful this charge bait is against monsters with weak ice, and how it's also set in new speedruns as well. It's one of the best elemental charge baits currently for stats and damage alone, and can hit to around 200 to 300 plus against Colby when planned right. Don't sleep on this weapon if you get it, as it is a must have weapon to use and overall improve on. Now lastly, before we go on forever, we have the Kajar Bow Water with an attack of 240, 10% affinity. 300 water, no slots, close range, paralysis and poison coatings, and critical element. An alternative version to the Tower of Arrow water build, it shares the same similarity as it, but this version focuses more on the raw damage aspect, compared to the Arrow version that focuses more on the elemental side aspect, to give it a ideal role in the field, although through build crafting, that doesn't have to be the case. I would honestly say that the Kajar version is probably the superior version simply for its innate critical element, so it more focused on affinity plus attack buffs and the extra flexibility for adding an elemental, or whatever else skill you want, while the Tower of Arrow version can, can't fully function unless it has a free element available, which takes up a number of slots to begin with. But the attack difference between the two is quite small, so no matter what path you decide to go on, 
either one is just as good for you to pick. And that comes to the end of the few Kajal weapons to look out for while on the hunts. Do comment in the comment section if you managed to grab one of the final few weapons, or if you managed to nab something else that's worth mentioning instead. So like always, thank you hunters for tuning in, and I hope to see you again in our next hunt.